Hello and welcome to another video tutorial with Märklin of Sweden. Today we're going to make gravel road or dirt road as they're called sometimes. So this is what we will be modeling today. A kind of average maintained dry dirt road with a bit of grass in the middle. The dirt road they come in, in you know, numerous colors and, and forms. You see here in the photos I've, I've been taking from just the surrounding areas here in Sweden that they, they range from everything from like a neutral gray to you know yellowish brown with the grass in the middle. So the dirt road is one thing and it's really easy to make a dirt road. It's just two layers of paint with the top layer with glue in and just grout on top. So, that's not the tricky part. The tricky part is to, to get that color which match the, the surrounding landscape so it kind of blends in. Anyway, let's get started. The base material in my road will be made from styrofoam. This can also be made from black plywood if you like that material better. This styrofoam comes typically in thicker sheets so it needs to be cut. To cut you need a styrofoam cutter. I have a tutorial on how to build one of those. Just click on the link on the upper right hand corner and you will see that tutorial. You need to press the inner radius together when you're bending such a wide part as we're bending here. If you're stretching the outer part it will obviously crack. Once we have the desired shape I glue it in place using PVA B glue and then I plaster the edges uh, so I get a bit of a nice ditch on both sides of the track. You see this area here is prepared with a very easy method. It takes no more than like 10 minutes to make. A link to that tutorial is in the right hand corner of the screen. But today we'll take this area to the next level. Now the styrofoam has a tendency to get kind of wavy, especially in the inner radius where you pressed it together. So I'm once again plastering the road, this time with a concrete based plaster which do not crack or shrink. So you know it, it fills out very nicely and, and gives a good surface. Once I have plastered the road surface, I shape the ditches using a stiff brush. It gives kind of a texture to the to the ditch and also it's kind of easy to work with a stiff brush like this. And this is what it looks like with the plaster in place. Once the plaster has set, dried, it's time to do some sanding. And I sand until I have a smooth surface. When we're done sanding this surface, there will still be some uh, irregularities and, and stuff left here which we want to get rid of. So we're adding another layer of plaster. This time it's a sand based wall plaster. And when that has set, it's time to do some sanding again. Now it's time to mix some paint to paint the road surface. I'm going for that uh, yellowish brown look, so I'm mixing here acrylic black, white, burnt umber and a bit of yellow. The plaster is kind of absorbent, so I need to add on top of this layer another layer with paint. This time I'm also adding a portion of PVA glue. The purpose with the PVA glue is to increase the bonding strength for the grout we will have on top later. The PVA glue makes the paint a bit thick, so I thin it with water to avoid marks and patterns from the brush. And then we're ready to add the texture of the gravel road. It's made from tiles grout. It's a concrete based powder, available in many shades between white and black, as well as brown. Cost is also very low. One kilo costs about five dollars or five euros, and it's good enough for 200 layouts at least. Another great advantage with the tiles grout is that it contains a lot of pigment. That means that by only having these three shades, dark grey, light grey and brown, you can blend by mixing, shaking any tone of grey or brownish grey, which is just perfect for a model railroad. And as you can see in this close-up, it's a perfect blend. It's not just a mix. 
Then it's time to put that grout on top. I use a container with a nylon sock as a sieve or a diffuser to get a uniform distribution of the grout over the painted surface. Once done and dry, then it's time to vacuum. Now, the grout needs to be passivated. This is done using a mix from one part alcohol and nine part water. I just mist that over the entire road surface. When dry, it will retain its original color. All right, now we got the foundation in place, the bent styrofoam glued down with the plaster and a smooth road surface painted twice with the grout on top. So now it's time to start the detail works. I start this by adding some sorted sand in the ditches on the roadside and also if you like in the middle of the road. I fix the sand with PVA glue which I dab on to the surfaces where I will have my gravel. So I'm sprinkling on some gravel onto the glued areas. Once that done, I press gently with a brush that pushes the gravel into the PVA glue. With that done, it's time for some vacuuming. Then it's time to add some burnt grass. This is uh, mainly used as a diffuser to smoothen out the edge of the road to the graveled area in the ditch. Then it's time for some static grass. I start to make some turfs. Turf is made from a grass flock, which is a kind of dark green, four to five millimeter tall. And I put that into a static grass applicator. I keep adding this grass, this static grass, until the tufts are almost completely covered opaque with this uh, green grass. Then again vacuuming the area so I get rid of all the excess grass and add some wild grass. This one comes from Nach, which is a German manufacturer and I apply that until the tufts are completely filled with grass. So now they have both a portion of dark, really rich green, and also a bit of uh, more dead straws of grass. Now it's time to fill the spaces in between all of the tufts. This is done with uh, Noch 8312, which is a Mido grass and a bit shorter, 2.5 millimeter. And then again, when everything's dry, I vacuum the area thoroughly, so I get rid of all of the excess static grass, which have landed like everywhere. Once I made my mind up where I will have the trees, I mark the position for the trees with a needle, a yellow needle like this, and then I start to plant the bushes. At this point, I wanna weather the road. This is made using a dry pastel, it's a raw sienna, which has a yellow tone. I grind powder from a crayon and then I apply the powder using a makeup sponge like this. It's a good thing to have a modeled car on the road. So you see the width, the track width of that car. With the weathering in place, it's easy for me to apply now glue for the center grass line. I first add burnt grass and then the static grass on top. And again, some vacuuming. Now it's time to build a crash barrier. I make the posts from uh, two millimeter square spruce. I sand it smooth and then I paint it with a gray color and cut it to 11 millimeter length. The guardrail is made from 0.4 millimeter thick plywood which I cut to three millimeter width like this. Once cut, I sand it so it get a smooth surface suitable for painting. And I paint it in a white color. The posts are fixed to the roadside using PVA glue. It's a little spacer to check the distance between the poles. With all the poles in place and the glue dry, I fix the guardrail using fast set glue, cyanoacrylate type glue. And I trim the edge 
to the proper length. Last but not least, I put all of the trees in place. I check from different angles so they stand up straight and put a bit of support if necessary. I cover the glued areas with Woodland Scenic Earth Blend and I push that into the glue using a brush. With the trees in place, all that remains is signs and roadside markings, if you intend to have such things. All right, I hope you liked the tutorial. If you did, please help others to find this video by giving it a thumbs up. If you got questions, uh, please post them in the comment field below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. If these videos helped you with your hobby, remember that all of this happens because a few of you support the channel. So if you want to be one of the good guys and keep the lights on here and the cameras rolling, sharing my passion with you, Go on to Patreon or make a one-off donation via PayPal on the link found below in the video description. Please subscribe to the channel and you will get a notification once next video gets published. Until that happens, see ya! <laughs>